if we have a spring and the spring constant is k and the mass is m, then we give this mass an initial speed, then we release uh, the object, then this, uh, this block will oscillate uh, left and right uh, around the equilibrium position. And this is another example. The third example of oscillation is we uh, have a drum, example, drum. And if you just strike the drum and the surface of this drum will uh, vibrate with a very small uh, amplitude. And when this drum, the surface of drum vibrate, um, it will produce a sound. So actually the sound um, is the vibration of the object. And if the frequency of the vibration um, is uh, located in a range, then the human's ear can, can hear this sound. So um, when we talk about oscillation, we need a expression or equation to represent or to quantify the vibration. Usually we use displacement as a function of time. Displacement as a function of time to quantify The oscillation. So here, let me use an example of the spring and a block. So we have a block contact with spring, and the oscillation direction is in the horizontal direction. So the displacement is x. And at the beginning, um, if the spring is stretched with a displacement A, the displacement is A. This A, then uh, after the displacement is A, then I release this block. If it's stretched, the block has a spring force the spring force goes to the left, and the spring force. And because the, uh, the spring is stretched, so the force is on the left. And when I release the block, the block will get an acceleration to the left. So the displacement will decrease and until it reaches to the equilibrium position. So if I draw a displacement at the function of time, displacement at the function of time. So at the beginning, it starts from a displacement of A. Then after I release the spring, uh, I release the block and the displacement decrease and reach to the zero. And when the block reach to zero, displacement, the force is zero, but if the speed is not zero, because from uh, the red point to the equilibrium position, this block is accelerated by the spring. So when the block is at the equilibrium position, the block has a speed to the left. So it will going to compress the spring. So in this case, the spring was compressed. No, it's compressed. So um, it will keep compressing the uh, spring until the speed goes to zero. So there is a largest displacement. Here's another color, large displacement and goes to here. There's a, a largest compression. And after it goes to the left point, uh, the compression goes to maximum, then the spring is going to uh, repulse the block. So the block is going to move rightward. So it will goes back and 
reach to the initial position. So it keep going, and this function uh, is a cosine function. So x is a cosine something times t. Okay, so the displacement as a function of time is a cosine function, and we usually use the angular frequency times the t, and we put this product inside the cosine function. And because and the oscillation has an amplitude, that's the initial displacement, so we multiply an amplitude in front of the cosine function. So this is the expression of the oscillation. So we have four parameter. First one is the displacement. Then we have amplitude times the cosine function. Then inside the cosine function, we have angular frequency multiplied by time. So we have one, two, three, four parameters. So let me discuss the four parameters separately. And um, we're interested in the relationship between the x and the t. And the amplitude and angular frequency are the quantification of this oscillation. For the frequency, we have angular frequency. Frequency. Or we call this angular speed. So in the rotation, we call omega as angular speed. So from the name, you should know this number uh, is quantification of the oscillation speed. If the oscillation is very fast, then the angular speed is large. If the oscillation is small, uh, it is very slow, then this value is very small. Um, and the unit of the angular speed is equal to, let me see, the unit of omega is per second, or we use radian per second. And the amplitude depends on where we release the spring. So it's the maximum displacement. So the unit is meter. Unit is meter. So this is expression of an oscillation. And, um, for each circle, when we release the spring and it goes back to the original position here, it takes a period of time. So we call this duration as period. So for each circle, how long does it take for the spring and for each oscillation? And the time is called period. And for each period, the angular frequency times the period from this equation, we should know this equal to two pi. So the period and the angular oscillation has a, un has a relation. That's a period equal to two pi over omega. And usually we uh, use another value to represent uh, the frequency. So we have another frequency. That's f. f and the omega has a two pi difference. So usually we say two pi times f equal to omega. Omega is called angular frequency. And f is called frequency. It's the same thing, but it has a two pi factor in between. So um, if we use f um, to calculate the frequency, then the time, the period, and the frequency have the relation. Uh, let me write in another position. So we have time equal to one over f. So f has a unit, the same thing um, per second, or we use hertz to represent the unit. So um, in this oscillation, I just talk about the parameters to describe the oscillation. Then I give you an example to help you 
interpret these four parameters. So here is an uh, oscillation, and we have a displacement as a function of time, and we're looking for the frequency, amplitude, period, and angular frequency. So let's uh, figure out the period first. The period um, is defined as a time, and how long does it take for the oscillation to go back to the initial position? Right? The initial position is here, then it does a drop down, goes back, and stop here. So this is one circle. So the duration for one circle is 16 seconds. 16 seconds. So that's a period. Okay. And if we know the period, we will know the frequency. The frequency f is equal to 1 over t. So that will be uh, 1 over 16 hertz. That's a frequency. And the angular frequency equal to two pi f, right? two pi times f. So we have two pi over 16. And the, the unit is per second. The last one will be the amplitude. The amplitude is, uh, the maximum displacement. So that will be the displacement is defined from the uh, position to the equilibrium position. The equilibrium is here. So that's the maximum displacement. So that's 10. The amplitude is 10 centimeters. So it's not 20. The A is not 20. The displacement is not from here to here. Okay, this is not displacement. The displacement is from um, the position where the oscillation is to the equilibrium position. So if we have a spring contact with a block, so at the equilibrium position, we should know the net force of the block is zero. So we use the equilibrium position as our reference. If it oscillates um, above or below the reference, then we use the uh, instant location minus the reference location, then that will be the displacement. Okay, so let me take a pause here. Do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have questions, I'm going to move on. The next um, topic I'm talking about is the, the relation between the frequency and the spring constant and the mass. So what depend, uh, what does the frequency depends on? If we have a spring contact with a block and we know the spring constant is K, and we know the mass is m. And if there is oscillation, uh, the expression should be the amplitude times a cosine function. And we want to know what the omega is, what's the angular frequency. If we only know the spring constant and we know the mass, does this two parameter uh, determine the frequency? And let's do the free body diagram. So if the spring is compressed, then let's see what's the direction of the force. The spring is going to repulse the block. So the force goes in this way. How about the displacement? Uh, the equilibrium position as a here, 
is an equilibrium position. When the spring is not either compressed or stretched. So there is a reference. Then you will find that the displacement is towards the left. That means the displacement and the force are interparallel. So the force equal to minus kx. I have a minus in front of this expression because the directions are interparallel. This is the first case. The second case, if the spring is stretched, then we will have contact with block. Okay. And the reference equilibrium position here. And the displacement is rightward. How about the force? Because the spring was is stretched, so the spring force is towards the left. The spring is going to drag the block leftward. In this case, you will also find the force and the displacement are interparallel. So we still have force equal to minus kx. So that's a free body diagram and the net force is the spring force. So we have a Newton's second law, spring force equal to ma, right? A is acceler acceleration. In this case, because the force is not a constant force, we have to use derivative um, to replace the displacement. So second derivative of displacement is acceleration. Okay, because we know the x is a function of time and the expression is a cosine function. So we can um, plug in the uh, expression into this equation, right? We will replace x by a cosine omega t. Then let's figure out the relation between the k, m, and the omega. So on the left side, we have minus k times displacement as a cosine omega t. That's the left side. Right? The right side, we have to do the second derivative. The second derivative, let's do the first derivative. The first derivative dx over dt is a cosine function becomes sine function minus sine function. And because there is omega in front of the t, so we have to multiply by uh, omega. That's the first order of derivative. The second order, and we do the derivative, we have minus a and sine omega t become cosine omega t. And we still have one more omega. So we have omega square. Okay, that's the second derivative. Then this equation is equal to minus a cosine omega t times omega squared. And compare these two equations, we have a cosine omega t and a cosine omega t, so cancel. And hold on, we have a mass here, so we need times mass. So we have mass frequency square equal to k. Then the frequency to be solved, that's a square root k over mass. It's an important formula. Um, this is the relation between the frequency and the spring constant at the mass. That means if the spring is very hard, we have a very hard spring and the mass is light, then the frequency will be large. That means the oscillation will be very fast. We have a fast oscillation. So if the spring is very soft, it's very soft and the mass is very heavy, 
then the oscillation is very slow. Okay, so this is the uh, derivation of the frequency. Then let's do a uh, practice. How does this work? So when a body of unknown mass attach with a spring and spring constant is 120 Newton per meter. And the set, the vibrate has a frequency six Hertz. Um, we're looking for the period of the motion, the angular frequency and the mass. So let's do this. The period is one over frequency, right? So we have one over six. That's uh, 0.17 second. That's period. How about angular frequency? The angular frequency is two pi time frequency. Two pi times six hertz. Okay. This is around um, 29. Uh, radian per second. Oh, hold on, no, 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 no. So two pi is 628. It's around 37, okay. 37. And let's figure out the mass. We have the relation between the omega and the mass, k over mass. This is the equation. And k is 120, mass is unknown. So the mass is equal to uh, frequency square, angular frequency square, uh, 120 over frequency square. Okay, do the calculation uh, with my calculator. We have 120 over uh, 37 square. So this is very small. Uh, zero point zero. 88 Okay, so this is how we solve the mass. Do you have any question? Okay, then one more question. Um, there is a uh, simple uh, harmonic uh, oscillation or motion, and we call it SHM. And it says the force constant is uh, 450 Newton per meter, amplitude is 0 0.04 meter, and computes the maximum speed of this oscillation. The maximum speed. Okay, to calculate the maximum speed, let's figure out uh, the speed at the function of time. We know the displacement is equal to amplitude cosine omega t. So let me put in the number. Amplitude is 0 0.04 and omega frequency. Okay, frequency, we need to figure out frequency equal to square root k over mass. K is 450 Newton per meter mass is 0.5 kilogram to the square root. So, well, that would be 30, 30 per second. So in this case, let me write here, 30 per second. So that's a displacement. How about the velocity? The velocity 
is the first derivative of displacement. So that would be equal to minus a cos omega times sine omega t. Okay. If we only need to figure out the maximum speed, so that's the uh, amplitude of this expression. So the maximum speed equal to the amplitude times the angular velocity. The angular velocity is 30 and the amplitude is 0 0.04. So yeah, that's, let me see, 1.2. And you need to the meter per second. So the maximum speed is amplitude of this expression. How about the maximum acceleration? The maximum acceleration, let's do the derivative and find the amplitude of the acceleration. A is the derivative of the speed, right? So let's do the derivative of this formula, this formula. So we have minus a omega square times cosine omega t. So the maximum acceleration is amplitude of this expression. So amplitude is a omega square, so a max is equal to a omega square. Okay, so we have uh, a is point. 0 0.04 times 30 square. That's uh, 36 meter per second square. Okay, so do you have other questions? If not, let's um, go to the, the, the last topic, the pendulum. Uh, pendulum is a very interesting question. Um, it starts from when people know how to use a pendulum to record the time. So that's a timer. So there is a swing. The swing, just a swing left and the right. And for each swing, it takes the same time for each circle. So that's interesting because it doesn't depend on the mass of the block. It doesn't depend on the angle of the swing. It only depends on the length of the court. So it, it says that if there is a pendulum contact with a, a mass and the initial position is a small angle, theta is small. And we know the length of the cord. It says for each circle of the swing, the swing left and the right. After go back, if we just check the theta, the displacement, the angular displacement as a function of time, suppose it look like this. The period of the swing only depends on the length. It doesn't depend on The mass of the of the bore or the amplitude of the angle. Okay. So if you have a large angle, for example, if the swing 
begin with a large angle or a small angle. This is a small swing and a large swing. For each circle, the period is the same. So for a large uh, swing, the speed will increase. For a small swing, the speed decreases. But when we just use a timer to record the time, for each swing, each circle, the time is the same. So that's interesting. We need to figure out why. So let's do some free body diagram of this object. So for the object, we have two force, the mass and the tension on the cord. Okay. And because this is angular motion, we need to separate the force into the tangential direction and the radial direction. The tangential direction we call is x. Okay. Radial direction we call is y. And the mass could be separate into tangential direction and the radial direction. So this mg, if there's a theta, that will be the theta. Um, so in the tangential direction, the weight, the component of the weight will be mg sine theta. And the in the y component, that will be mg cosine theta. And in the radial direction, there's no motion. So the acceleration is zero. So the only uh, acceleration is in the x direction. So in the x direction, we have net force equal to mg sine theta. And let's figure out that. Um, if we define the counterclockwise is positive direction. When this object is on the left side, the angular displacement is negative. So I have to use negative sign in front of the force. And how about the acceleration direction? The acceleration direction is in the right direction. So that's counterclockwise. So we have the positive sign in front of the X acceleration. So we have mass times acceleration, that's MA. And we know MA could be written in second derivative of displacement. And for the displacement, we know displacement, if I use another color, displacement is here. This is displacement. This is the length of the arc. Displacement. The displacement equal to the length of the core times theta. So the equation could be simplified as mass times the length of the chord, then second derivative of the angular displacement. Then you will find the mass just cancel. Mass cancel. So we have minus g sine theta equal to L second derivative. And for a small angle, we have an up approximation. Theta is small, we have theta uh, is a wrong sine theta. They should have the similar value. So we are going to use theta to replace the sine theta. So g sine theta will be g theta. So in this case, I have a new equation right here, uh, minus g theta equal to L, second derivative of angular um, displacement. Then let's compare with the equation we derived just now. Here we have uh, minus kx 
equal to mass times the second derivative right here minus kx equal to mass second derivative and we say the x is a function of amplitude times the cosine function then we solve the angular velocity is equal to square root k over mass the same thing we have g theta equal to l second derivative of the theta and we know theta is also a function of amplitude times cosine omega t so in this case we can solve the frequency is equal to square root um, g over l okay then how about the period the period is equal to 2 pi over omega so that's is equal to 2 pi square root l over g then you can find that the period only depends on the length of the cord and the acceleration uh, gravitational acceleration it doesn't depend on the theta or it doesn't depend on the mass okay, this is very important and i'm going to give you a example so there is a pendulum it says the pendulum has a cord contact with a bomb and the cord is 1.50 meter long if there is a minor earthquake how many swings per second will this fixtures take so we're looking for the frequency to get the frequency we need to know the period okay the period we go to 2 pi square root length over acceleration gravitational acceleration the length of the cord is um how much let's see 1.50 and g is 9.8 so in this case we can solve the period after we have the period we will solve the frequency okay so let me stop here do you have any question Okay, if you don't have question, I'm going to give you a quiz. Hold on, let me share my screen.